Hey guys, welcome back to my last Epoch run. It's a Sork run. Well, uh, Mage right now, and I'm going to Spell Sword. We are ambivalent about feelings. We insult people. We joke around. We think about the Roman Empire a lot, and women wonder why. We are consumed by fantasies of self-defense. What would I do with that? Who is that, you know, situation? We live to protect. It's in our genes. But those, but those flaws are all intertwined, you know? And, and part of that is we don't suffer empathy without analysis. So it's time for women in the Democratic Party to do the same thing. You don't know everything. You have great benefits, but you also have flaws, and you cannot do this alone. But at this rate, you will. Let us protect the just Not to say let us once in a while. Let us. And don't let us, because then we'll ignore it. Uh, it's the end of the world, so the liberals over in NBC after the network dare to hire a Republican. From design and products to removal and installation, Readout is with you through every step of your remodel. Call or visit readout.com for your free in home design consultation. Bush. Thank you. 
gold, silver, and unalloyed kits. For a limited time, Roslyn is offering up to $15,000 in free gold to qualified new customers. Call 800-630-8900. That's 800-630-8900. The liberal media can't stand the idea of having a different point of view on their air. Host at NBC and MSNBC completely losing it after NBC News hired the former chair of the Republican National Committee, Ron McDaniel, as the conservative. strongly objected to it for several reasons. We hope NBC will reconsider its decision. It goes without saying that she will not be a guest on the morning show in her capacity as a big contributor. I think our boss is going to apologize for putting you in this situation. When NBC made the decision to give her NBC News' credibility, mm -hmm. you ask yourself, what is she bring NBC News? And now the DNC is getting in on the outrage, saying in a statement, quote, there should be no debate about the truth in our political discourse. Why am I standing is a stupid liar? And has no place in an honest and objective conversation about the future of this country. The Ted Cruz is saying, not so fast. The Texas senator is calling out the hypocrisy by pointing out that many problems on liberal networks were once employed by a Democratic White House. All right, and now, I, I don't quite remember a backlash on a point like this when NBC hired, I think it was Michael Steele, who was also the former RNC chair. Is this just you. the way they are today? Uh, yeah, he also did was back. He was not the top. So, I think so, I guess. Here's my point. I'm from more voice than not I think that is helpful to wear. And if you have boxes and the company has decided that this is a person we want to have as a part of our team, then either keep an access, don't look her if you don't want her on your show, or say, hi, welcome. Like, God bless, the talking through. I don't understand the vitriol and the animosity. If they do let her go and get by, so why that will be fashioned and scared when she was fired from the White House. And to my benefit, from it. The, what, I can't remember the last time in a movie he actually reprimanded his boss uh, and demand an apology for hiring someone they didn't like. Uh, 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 I would almost uh, uh, block it, except that I know that this is totally personal. By the way, do you got, I, what is the press? Is that on, uh, um, is that on? Is it on Sunday? I don't know. Um, you know, he was let go, right? Of being depressed, but then he was let go, and that was his successor, Kristen Welker. So I think he was trolling her. Like, he was, he was basically saying, you know, if I was there, this never would have happened. And that's why you could see her face. She's looking at him like, what are you doing? What are you saying? It was a, it, it, it basically trying to get back at that. Um, but I think I speak for most of America. Like, who the cares about these people? This is media theater. It reminds me of when they used to replace the character in a soap opera with a new actor. But, sure, yeah. but, but it was the same character. Yeah. Right? So the, the role is the same. The lines will be delivered. The actors will perform their duties. No one will be the least surprising. These people are all soaking in the same goo of elitism. They're all beltway boobs. It's like you're not going to get, and you're never going to be surprised by anything on MSNBC. So, I say, who cares? The suggest ain't fun. Curators will use the who can represent the voice of half of America, all the people who voted for Donald Trump, or do they just not care about what other people say? No one's allowed to represent the voice on NBC. That's the whole point. NBC is gone for, what, five years on this house hours telling everybody MAGA Republicans are extremists. They're insurrectionists. They have to be deplatformed. They have to be censored. And you have to investigate them and prosecute them and not allow them to have it. So all of a sudden, NBC Brass hires one of them. And <laughs> all of them, the entire narrative, the morning Joe, and these guys have been selling forever. So the Brass doesn't even didn't watch morning Joe, or they don't believe a morning Joe is selling. They're like, yeah, let us know. All right, it's an auction here. Let's do it. She gets us access, a little balance, sign the check. And now we're hearing what? That 
inmates are running the asylum and they might actually cancel their contract and not put it on. Okay, that just tells me NBC is not a business, it is a political operation. Yeah. Jessica, you're a First Amendment proponent. Do you think that NBC made the right decision to hire a lot of damage? Well, I can only afford my very high rent because yeah. Fox believes in having opposition voices. So I do think that's incredibly important. And obviously, great respect for the First Amendment. And I feel that it is important to have representatives of the party that actually represent the party versus never Trump Republicans who are not telling you anything about what's going on inside the Republican Party at this moment. It is a small faction that does decide elections. So you should hear from someone who says, I voted for Trump in 2016, but I switched to Biden in 2020. But Ron McDaniel offers incredible access, which is definitely a huge part of this, in this election year, as Jackie said. But she's not a regular Republican. She's not a regular opposition voice. Um, not only just because of how powerful she was and the job that she held, but she is someone who flies in the face of what has become the core ethos over at NBC and MSNBC from refusing to say that Joe Biden freely and fairly won that election to getting on the phone with Donald Trump and calling up GOP officials in Michigan and pressuring them not to certify the election results. And so we all know this. If you tune in to MSNBC, you are going to hear about January 6th a lot. You are going to hear about how it was. No, not okay. I'm not done. It is core to their ethos there. It is core to their viewership. And that is one of the most important things that has been committed against the country. And then to go out and hire someone who has participated in it and made no apologies. If you want to have her on and say, every interview is going to start with, why did you call up those officials? And pressure them not to certify the results when we know how people voted in Michigan. Or why did you say that you don't know that Joe Biden actually won that election? That's one thing. But if you're just going to bring her like a normal opposition voice, like me, just run the mill establishment Democrat, I don't think that that's correct. And it probably is a bad business decision. So, so then you must agree with someone like Letitia James who has said that uh, Trump was an illegitimate president. She should be sanctioned somewhere for she, saying the president was illegitimate. If she was offered a $300,000 she whatever, she said, why are you like that? Who was the one bringing up January 6th? But why did the general have a part in what happened with January 6th? This is being investigated. I was just trying to say about it. If you watch that interview with Lana, and if you watch what happens with Jim Jordan on Lunch and all that, yes. you see there's a shifting in the media on one particular issue, which is you can believe that the election was won by Biden. I do. I've said that all along, from the beginning. But I also think that there were, of course, obviously some problems because the election when you had the election during COVID, the state laws that were changed immediately. And so all of a sudden, if you say, yeah, of course there were things that were not great and we can fix those things, you're an election denier. That doesn't, that doesn't work. But you watch the media is trying to shift a little bit so that everybody who says you should make sure that the ballot harvesting is not abused, then you're a, an election denier. That's not the case. That's not the case. Oh, not the case. The official who's saying I'm in court. I'm going to be quiet what the media is saying now. I'm talking about Ron McDaniel. Talking about how the media is framing the questions now and what they've done inside on NBC and since she finished this last night. All right, up next. What is Clark now? I went to high school, but that's uh, carbon dioxide is a, a gas. <laughs> Democrats expert witness gets embarrassed during a block hearing. Cool. We all believe in the mission of bringing textile manufacturing back to America. We're taking the best fibers our farm can produce, spinning it at one location, weeding it, then finally into a cut and sewn product. There's value in buying American mail. It has a real life impact up and down the supply chain. We want our customers to feel how special this product is right when they open the box. Go to redneckcotton.com and receive 20% off your order with code box 20 Frustrated by skin tags? Dr. Schultz has the breakthrough you've been waiting for. The first FDA career at home skin 
kids were so upset. So they're bringing lawsuits against American oil and gas companies. And some of these courts are actually giving them the go-ahead. Like the Hawaii court is like, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to American energy companies? Excellent. So Jesse, the, I think what he wanted to do that, right? Is that rising temperatures and we've seen the increase on green artificial snow having to be used for winter sports is a climate problem. Because it ended up going this way, do you think anyone heard any of that messaging from the witnesses? No, Jessica. I noticed that crime is up. Does that make me an expert on crime? That's this guy who always played the game. He's an expert because he notices there's less snow. Well, no, okay, I notice mean, there's less criminals behind bars. Am I going to testify for the doctor? It doesn't make any sense. I will say, though, I have noticed the weather this changing. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it's warmer in the winter and it snows less. Okay, but here's what the Democrats want us to do they say, give me all of your money so then we can spend it to save the world. <laughs> Okay, well, how does that happen? Oh, they're just going to give it to donors to build windmills, EVs, and solar panels that don't work very well, and then nobody wants. The donors get rich, and nothing changes. So how is anybody being convinced by the Democrats when it comes to climate change? So now they're just bringing in skiers that notice there's less snow. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, so according to science, every fraction warmer makes the planet more livable overall. When uh, cold weather kills more people than warm weather, that is a fact. So I'm sorry if this elitist cross-country skier is not getting his hat snow. It's helping the rest of us. I might have felt sorry for him, but then it is the Senate Dems fault for bringing him and calling him a highly credible witness. And remember that we paid for that, right? He didn't come on his own dime, I'm pretty sure. So we paid to have that guy on. We're probably going to pay to hear Tony Hawk. Tell us about immigration. Uh, it just shows you that these, I think, here's my theory. I think somebody in the Senate had a crush on him. Ooh, oh, why not? Sure. Yeah, staff had a crush on him. Oh, yes, but. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just a backstory to this, and, and uh, I'll be talking about it live yeah. on Special Report. <laughs> Excellent. We'll save it here. I'm going to see you guys next time. All right. Peace out.